section, we're going to be looking more at quadratic equations. So far, we've only really dealt with y equals mx plus b forms. We've been looking at the intercepts. We've been looking at the slopes. Um, we've been plotting points. So for this section, we're going to look more at our quadratic equations and looking at how we can solve them and find out more information about them. So if we're considering a quadratic, we're going to be looking at y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is kind of our standard form for quadratic. And we're going to look at three different ways that we can solve this in order to figure out what x is. We cannot take approach for solving for x like we did with our linear equations because now we have an x to the second power within the equation. So our first way that we're going to look at solving is called factoring. Before we can kind of get into some of the ins and outs of factoring or so review what you already know, we need to consider what is standard form for a quadratic. Our standard form for a quadratic is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c, and we always want to make sure it's equal to zero. We never want to leave any numeric value over here other than zero. Next thing we need to review before we start factoring is looking at the idea of a zero property. It says a general note, the zero property and quadratic equations. The zero property states, if a times b is equal to zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero, where a and b are real numbers or algebraic expressions. We say that a quadratic equation and an equation containing a secondary polynomial where a, b, and c are real numbers and a cannot be zero. So all of this together shows us that I have, if I have two things I'm multiplying, again, I'm just going to call them a and b. If I multiply two things together and it gives me zero, then I have to know this, that either a is zero because zero times b we know would give us zero, or b is zero. Again, because a times zero would give me zero, no matter the values of the other letter. We're going to use this property in order to help us solve one of these quadratic equations. So the first type I'm going to look at in factoring is looking at when your lead coefficient is a 1. So let's first look at a quadratic where the number or our a value attached to x, x squared is just a 1. It's kind of a more simple, simpler factoring equation, so that's why I'm going to start with that one. So there's a couple things to remember when you're factoring, and you've probably done this before. When you're going to factor, you're going to set it up into the two factors or the two items that were multiplied or foiled or distributed together in order to get that quadratic. So first of all, we say, okay, what can multiply to give me x squared? That would be an x and an x. Then I like to do a little sign trick. I look back at this back sign, and if the back sign is positive, it's going to be the same sign. And if the back sign is negative, it means different sign. Meaning, the two signs that I'm going to put in here, addition or subtraction, they're either going to be both the same or they're going to be different. Since ours is negative, I'm going to just go ahead and put a plus and a minus in here. And notice, I've got most of this filled in now. And then the next thing is figuring out a number that will multiply to give me 8 and add to give me positive 2. So I like systems, I like organization, so I just come up here to the side and think, okay, what will multiply to give me 8? And so I always do 1 in the number, so 1 and 8. 2 times 4. The next number would be 3, and 3 will not multiply to give me 8. And then notice I'm back up to 4, so this is my whole list of what will multiply to give me 8. It is negative 8, so that means one of these had to be negative. And I want to see which combination is going to add to give me negative 2. Negative 8. Negative 1 and 8 is 7. Negative 2 and 4 gives me positive 2. So if I swap out which one's negative, I see that a positive 2 and a negative 4 would multiply to give me 8, but add to give me the negative 2. Now I have factored that quadratic. Once I get done factoring, I'm going to draw my handy dandy table here, and I'm going to say, okay, if this grouping times this grouping gave me 0, then either x minus 4 was 0. I'm going to go ahead and solve that out. or x plus 2 was 0, and I solved it out. So now I have my two x values that I could plug back into the equation, and they would output and give me 0. 4 would do this, negative 2 would do this, so it's really nice because you can also go back and check your answer. We're going to work quite a bit with factoring as we go on, but this factoring where your lead terms and x squared, these are some great tricks. But they don't always work with things when we don't just have an x squared or a 1 right here. 
So let's look at an example where it's not just a 1 there. So part D, the lead coefficient other than 1. So in this first example, it's a little bit different. The word factoring is not just a matter of doing what to multiply and add, but it could also mean just factoring out the GCF. Notice that this problem, I just have two terms. I can see that they both have an X in them, and they both look like these big numbers would have something in common. Well, if we were factoring something out of them, we would just want to factor out the GCF, or the greatest common factor between the two. So I would say, okay, what do 6 and 3 have in common? What's the largest number that divides them both? And that'd be a 3. What do x squared and x have in common? Would they both have a singular x that they could share? So I'm going to draw a parenthesis. I'm going to factor out a 3x. So 6 divided by 3 would be 2. x squared, take away an x, would just leave me with a singular x. Minus, I took this entire thing away. I can't just leave it blank. So 1 is going to be my placeholder. So if I were to go back in here and distribute this, I would come out with my original problem. Similar to what we just looked at, this is 3x times 2x minus 1. So again, I have something times something to give me 0. So again, we're going to see our 0 property. So I'm going to say 3x is equal to 0. I'm going to solve this out. So I get x to be 0, which is a fine value. I'm going to take 2x minus 1 equal to 0. I'm going to solve this out. And I get x to be 1 half. So it's okay if you get fractions or even zero as an answer. These are still plausible solutions. If I were to take these answers and plug them back into these x values, again, it would output a zero for me like I thought it would. Now the next question um, is a little bit different. So I've been trying to hit up just different examples as we go throughout. With this one, you notice we have a value in front of that x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this problem is equal to 0 like the last two problems. And so to do that, I'm going to have to subtract this 3 to move it over. I get 2x squared plus 9x plus 4 equal to 0. Next, I'm going to approach this and think, okay, this does not have, this does have a 2, not just a 1 in front of that x squared. So what I do to figure this out, I like systems, procedures, ways of getting at it. A lot of people will teach you guess and check, figure out what to multiply to give you 2, 4, and the combos to give you 9. You play around them. But I'm going to show you a way that's very straightforward, follow your steps, and there's no guessing and checking as you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this 2x squared times 4, and that gives me an 8x squared. And I'm going to think what will multiply to give me an 8. So that would be a 1x and an 8x, a 2x and a 4x. Then I'm going to think what will add to give me this 9. So kind of similar to what we did two problems ago. And I can see that 1x and 8x would do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unadd that 9x. So I'm going to say 2x squared plus 1x plus 8x plus 4. So it seems kind of silly. Like why would I take something that's already added together and break it apart? Well, now I'm going to factor by grouping, meaning I'm going to look at these first two items and think, what do only these two items have in common? And they have an x in common. So I'm going to factor that out, leaving me with a 2x plus 1. Plus from right here, I'm going to look at these two and say, what do these two have in common? They have 4 in common. So I'm going to factor that out, leaving me with a 2x plus 1. And as you can see, now this grouping and this grouping both have a 2x plus 1 in common, just like maybe have an x in common, etc. So I'm going to pull that out front, take it away from each piece, leaving me with an x plus 4 equal to 0. So just like the first problem, you can see I now have two things being multiplied to give me 0. So now I'm just going to draw my table and finish. So I get 2x equal to negative 1, so x is equal to negative 1 half x plus 4 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 4. As you can see, in all of these, we are getting two answers. When we were solving linear equation, our highest power was 1, so it would give us one answer. Now our highest power is 2, so it should be getting, at most, two answers. So in those last examples, we looked at factoring where your lead terms are 1, factoring by GCF, or factoring by grouping when your lead term is not a 1. So in the last process I want to show you how to do is extracting a square root. Say you have a problem, you notice you have a square term, but you don't have a singular x. 
Well, another way of approaching this, instead of the previous ways, is to isolate your square term and then square root to solve for it. So I'm going to get my x squared by itself. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides. And I get x squared equal to 49. To get rid of a square, just like getting rid of negatives, we do addition. Get rid of squared, we square root. So I get x equal to the square root of 49 is 7, which there is a square root button on your simpler scientific calculator. And I don't know, when 7 was squared, yes, that gives me 49. But if it was negative, it also could have been squared and given me 49. So whenever solving for a variable and removing the square, I'm going to have to say plus or minus 7. Or we could write this as 7 and negative 7 just depending on how the computer would like you to enter that answer. Um, most of them do not have a plus or minus sign, so if I'm working it out by hand, I'm just going to say plus or minus. But if I'm entering all my answers, I might just say 7, comma, negative 7. Looking at the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to add the 37 over to the other side. I get x squared equal to 37 and then square root. So we x equal to plus or minus the square root of 37. You go to your handy dandy calculator and it tells you square root of 37 is some kind of decimal. And 37, I can't even break down into factors. So for this reason, this would be my answer. Just plus or minus 37. Let me show you one more without extracting the square root. For this one, notice I have a whole item being squared. So again, I'm going to go ahead and square root it, leaving me with x minus 3 equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. And then I'm going to add the 3 over. So kind of a reverse of steps, giving me x equal to 3 plus or minus 7. Or again, we could say 3 plus the square root of 7, comma 3 minus the square root of 7. And that's a very exact answer. I'm not going to go to my calculator and get a decimal and round it. I'm just going to leave it in this exact form of 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. So factoring is nice. Square roots are nice. But what if none of that works? So if none of that works, we do have a plan B of sorts that we can work with, and it's called this last wave, quadratic formula. Now, quadratic formula does work every time, but it's not always the quickest way you want to work it. Like, say you're working number one and you forgot to factor. You could have done quadratic formula, but factoring would have definitely been quicker. So don't lean too heavily on the quadratic formula because it'll, it'll kind of take up your time if you don't know the other ways. So you definitely want to know all ways and be able to factor, extract, or use your quadratic formula as needed. As always with this, so our quadratic formula is this formula here. It is one that you'll have to memorize. It's called x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. Here's a real annoying song that I'm also going to post in Canvas to help you with remembering that. Um, just like with all the other problems, we do need to get any quadratic we're working with in standard form. So the first check is to subtract 9 and get this in standard form. Next step I want to do is I want to identify all the A, B's, and C's that I'm working with. So I always just like to make a little list here. Now it's only the coefficients in front of these values. So my A would be 1, B would be 3, and C would be negative 9. Now as you can see, I did not write any letters of X squared or X's here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my formula. The more I write it, see it, do it, hear it, the more I'm going to retain it. Next thing I do is I fill in my formula with just empty parentheses anywhere that I'm going to have a letter to fill in. Just to make sure I do order of operation and use my symbols correctly. Then I like to go in and fill in what these letters are. So let's see, B would be 3. A was 1, and C was negative 9, making sure I don't lose any negatives along the way. And lastly, I'm going to slowly do is fill this in. So this will give me negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, I'm going to slowly work this, so let's see, 3 square root give me 9, negative 4, positive 1, and negative 9 give me positive 36 all over 2. Keep reducing down. Don't try to do it all in one swoop. I don't want you to mess something up along the way. And then once you get to this point, you need to think, can I break this down anymore? 45 doesn't square root nicely in the calculator, but it does break down into its factors. And so I could say that this is the square root of 3 times 3 times 5. This pair could come out front, giving me 3 square roots of 5. 
for negative 3 plus or minus 3 square roots of 5 over 2.